that it is my pleasure to share this webinar time with Sarah and Alex from GFS Events. Both are integral to the planning and implementation of events, and today they are sharing their best practices and even better, they're showing you how they use these best practices in recent events. They brought along some great graphics and screenshots to show you how. And don't worry, the playback will be available, the slides will be available. So you can watch it back at your leisure, you can share it with anybody in your team. So I see we're going coast to coast already. We're going from Maine to Arizona to Ontario, we are up in British Columbia, Vancouver, we're spanning everything from schools to arts to, to theater and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're not familiar with Octria, we are celebrating our 10 year anniversary, yay! Um, and in that time, groups have raised over $300 million in the way of 30,000 auctions and over 2.5 million bidders. And we support all sorts of groups, whether it be arts and culture or animal lovers or sports or school, health and wellness. You got it. Everybody has used it for the Octria platform. So we're going to turn this over to Alex and Sarah, but I have a quick little survey I want to ask the group as you guys get started. Um, I am curious what your plans were or what you accomplished for last year and for this year for virtual events, because we're talking virtual events here. So here's a little survey, just two questions. Did you, ha did you hold a virtual event in 2020 or for your last fundraiser, whenever that was? And then are you planning for 2021, a virtual event only, a hybrid where you would do virtual and live, or you're undecided and that's why you came here for some help. So I'll let everybody clock in their answers and then I'll share the study. It's always nice to see what your peers are doing, um, which is also a good segue for me to remind you to join our Facebook group auction team talk, all sorts of, um, people that are running auctions, running event fundraisers, as well as the lovely team from GFS Events hangs out there also. There's all sorts of sharing. And I always say it's the nicest group on Facebook because it really is. So ladies, let me end this voting and then I'll turn it over to you and share the results. So it looks like most people voted. Um, it looks like last year we're almost at a 50-50, half and half split. Did you um, hold a virtual event last for your last one. And then for planning for 2021, it looks like about 45% is doing virtual, about 36% are planning hybrid, and the 9% are still unsure. So you're in a great place um, to listen to this webinar. We continue to have can additional webinars with Octria. You'll see that on our profile page. After you get your email, you'll be able to connect with everybody. And um, off we go. Thank you so much, Lori. We're really excited to be here. I will go ahead and start here with our introductions. My name is Sarah. I've been a part of the GFS events team for three years now. Uh, I absolutely love collaborating with nonprofits, both locally and around the country on fundraising events. It's a complete joy to work with so many organizations and um, they all have such incredible missions. So I'm really grateful to be here and share a little bit. Hi everyone, my name is Alex and I have been an event lead at GFS for the past two years now. Um, I've actually worked in the nonprofit world for the past three. Um, like Sarah said, it's an absolute joy working with nonprofit organizations and helping them plan fun, creative fundraising events. So a little bit more about GFS events. We are a Pacific Northwest based event management company. We work with nonprofits to exceed their fundraising goals by producing and executing successful fundraising events. Like Sarah mentioned earlier, we do work with clients from across the country now that we are virtual. We plan anything from walks, runs, galas, benefit dinners, auctions, and community events. We have helped over 40 nonprofits this past year take their annual fundraising events virtual and have actually picked up some very helpful tips and tricks that we are excited to share with you today. Um, we've used a variety of platforms, but we truly love using Octria for the customization features that we'll share with you today.
Oh, Sarah, I think you're on mute. That's about virtual events. The mute okay. <laughs> um, we're going to go over these three key components as we dive into our case studies. So best practices, great features that Octria has to offer, and a few marketing tips. We'll first take a deeper dive into these key components and then apply them to our case studies. So to begin, best practices. We have a few tips for you here regarding items that you should implement into your event. Um, so to begin, brand your fundraising platform. If you are using a third party, party platform such as Octria to house and run your fundraiser, make sure it looks like an extension of your website. Use the same colors, fonts, images, themes, etc. Add unique features in your event. We always look for ways to differentiate our events. What you can include is really important to your mission. Make sure that you have something that's unique to your organization. We've organized cooking classes, scavenger hunts, yoga classes, and then make sure you minimize your clicks to donate. Make it really easy for people to donate. Have your donate button clearly visible and viewable without having to scroll down on the page. Another pointer here is to per personalize all your communication. Specifically, what I'm talking about here is to make sure that all of your automatic emails from third-party platforms like Octria are personalized. Think about all the emails that your supporters are receiving. They're receiving a registration email, a donation receipt email, and their statement email. Octria has really great templates set up, and you can customize any of them. And then the next one is having an FAQ page. Virtual events vary from one to the next. So having an FAQ page is really helpful for your supporters to understand what they're meant to do in your event. Answer as many questions as you can up front. An FAQ page is really a great place to house any and all questions that could come your way. Make your call to action very clear. On your website, in your emails, on your socials, make it very obvious what you're asking your supporter to do, whether you're asking them to register, to donate, bid, share an invitation. Those are the call to actions that you wanna make very clear upfront. Fab features, some really fun features in Octria. Um, using that customization tool is really great. Uh, you can embed many items, your fonts, your logos. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Embedding, uh, using the embed for live stream, for pre-recorded videos, to chat, trivia, quizzes. Equivalencies. Another great way to help your supporters connect to your mission is to visually show them what their dollars can support. We really recommend that you steer away from using stock images. Rather, put up actual images from your organization along with a little bit of text that shares what different dollar amounts can provide to those you serve. Payment options. In Octria, you can give people the option to pay now or pay later. This is really a great option to include because inevitably, you know that someone's going to want to make a donation via check. It's ideal to have all this information stored on record and bonus, those pledges, those donations that may be coming later on will be reflected in your fundraising thermometer. Marketing. Using every channel for your fundraising event is so important for its success. Your donor pace will dictate which marketing avenues you should invest in the most. So to begin, peer-to-peer -peer word of mouth. Think of your staff, your board, volunteers, those are the people you need to lock in first. They will help you spread the word about the event and even lead with their own donations. Email and social media marketing is the next one. Make sure you are consistently pushing out email communication and posting regular on your social media. Snail mail, don't forget about good old snail mail. It's super important to use this avenue as well. Some supporters and donors do really appreciate receiving a physical invitation to your event. And lastly, media and press. 
Reach out to your network and connect with your local radio stations and local publishers to get your event out there. So, our case studies for today. Admittedly, Alex and I had a really hard time narrowing these down to three because it's so much fun to put together these websites um, and help bring our clients' events online in a virtual setting. So today we will be sharing with you uh, Salish Seas Expeditions, Crab Tucky Derby, Kita Changes Spring Salon Fundraiser, Halal Community Day Schools Week of Giving, and Alex, I'll let you start off with Salish Seas. Thanks, Sarah. So the first case study that we want to share with you is the Salish Sea Expeditions Crab Tucky Derby. You all heard me right. I said a Crab Tucky Derby. Salish Sea Expeditions is a Pacific Northwest based organization that inspires youth to connect with the marine environment through hands on learning and critical thinking. To differentiate their event from other virtual fundraisers, they kept the focus on what their donors and supporters enjoyed the most about their in person event, which was that Crab Tucky Derby. At the in-person event, guests would purchase a crab that would race live in different heats until a winning crab was determined. Now, the question that we were faced with was how to take such a unique event and bring it online. As Sarah mentioned earlier, one of the best practices that we encourage with each client is to brand your Octria platform to match your organization's website. We directed everyone to Salish Sea's main website, which is what you can see here on this screen. And you can see that the event theme and branding come all the way through with the organization's Crab Tucky Derby. You can also see that there is a clear call to action button right in the middle of the page that's asking people to register now. By having that button in the middle of the page, we're reducing clicks because that button is taking people immediately to the Octria website. By doing that, we are eliminating having an additional landing page on the organization's website. We recommend to clients to remove any landing pages on their website and just to utilize Octria's website as your landing page. Now in this next slide, you can see that we were able to incorporate not just the event theme, but the, over the organization's overall style branding into Octria's website. With the use of Octree's theme feature, I was able to create a website that had a landing page feel so it didn't feel like you were leaving the Salish Seas website completely. So we weaved this event marketing through the main website and using that theme feature, you are able to customize graphics, fonts, your style guideline colors, anything that you want to customize, you pretty much can using that Octria theme feature. Now for some cool features that we implemented here, you can see that most our team spent most of our time trying to make it super engaging. Now the Crab Tucky Derby involves the community with the children that were directly affected by the various programs, long-term volunteers, and new supporters. To help beat that Zoom fatigue, we utilize some of the embed features that you can see here. So using the specific embed feature, we were able to create a nautical know-how trivia game that tested donors' knowledge of the seas and the organization in general. Each person that played the nautical know-how game was then entered to win a prize during our live Zoom Krabby Hour. Another unique Octria element that we tailored to this event specifically was using the item catalog as a custom crab card purchasing page. The students at the local school district were all tasked to design their very own crab card, just like Crab of the Hut that you see right there on the screen. And they were asked to design the crab's occupation, design, age, and interests. Now, on this next slide, you can see another example of a custom website that I built specifically explaining how the Crab Tucky Derby would work and the different heats that the crabs would run. So now that the Crab Tucky Derby had gone virtual, we had to determine how to market the event. The wonderful thing about virtual events is that there is no limit on who can attend. The sky is the limit and distance is no longer an issue. We were able to market to students and parents by involving them in our actual program. So the students were the ones that made the crab cards, which was a great way for us to expand our typical audience. We also created custom event branded stickers that were sent to every registrant. Now, one of my favorite small marketing pieces that we did was the creation of a custom mint julep recipe that attendees can make at home. 
you can actually see it right there in the middle of your screen with the Pacific Northwest Julep. So it's a great option for people that want to do something fun, but maybe don't have a budget to do like a dinner in a box or a gala in a box if you want to have your attendees do something at home. It was super fun and it helped kick off the Krabby Tucky Derby. Now, all these crabs did end up running the race of their life, but this time they, they were plastic and the races were pre-recorded. If you wanted to see how the Crab Tucky Derby went, you can check out our portfolio page on the GFS events website. And now I'll hand it over to Sarah to talk about our second case study. Thanks, Alex. All right. Now I know I shouldn't have favorites, but this event was so much fun to plan and create for Key to Change. I was a design lead as well on this event, so I had quite a bit of creative freedom with this one. Um, this is Key to Change. They are an organization who empowers communities by working alongside students, teachers, parents, and guardians to build consensus, meet teacher needs, and create a holistic environment where students can flourish. They remove the barrier to entry for low-income students and students of color and offer excellent music instruction. We partnered with them on their virtual Spring Salon fundraiser, which took place on Saturday, April 11th. It was a live-streamed event from Banner Royal Hall with some pre-recorded segments built in. We worked directly with Banner Royal Hall's tech team to create this spectacular and smooth live-streamed event. Now, this event was also very unique because Key to Change also hosted their annual solo string festival that Friday through Sunday. There were 40 students who performed over the course of three days. It was incredible to see their mission in action leading up to our fundraiser. You can see the picture in the middle that my fur babies enjoy tuning in as well. We surpassed our fundraising goal, which was a huge triumph for all. Best practices. So this is, as you can see, our screenshot of our live stream page on Octria. You can see that I have the main header showcasing both the festival and the fundraiser. The colors and fonts carry over from Key to Change's main website. The donation button is high up on the page and very visible. You can't miss it. And the nonprofit status is listed below. Again, having an FAQ page is really great. It provides further clarity to your supporters and saves you from having to repeat yourself over and over again. If your event is multifaceted, using blocks or separate colors can keep information in order and easy to digest. We also like to add at the very bottom a statement on the FAQ page that reads, I have a question that is not answered on this page with our contact information listed. That way, if someone does need extra help, we're there to troubleshoot right away. All right, this is a screenshot here of our donation page on Octria. Again, it's always great to use real images over stock photos. While stock photos oftentimes look more cohesive and structured, using your organizational photos makes it more authentic and real. I especially love that first picture there on the left showing um, the ED Quentin Morris teaching one of his students. I can connect with that and it feels very um, personable. If you're going to share your equivalencies, be sure that you make a note on that page that these costs are actually representative. It's really important to be transparent and let the donor know that their donations that they're giving towards this event may go to support other programs in your organization. Also, key tip here, make sure your pages are mobile friendly. Check them on your cell phone, on your iPad, on other devices. Use Octria's customizable formatting elements like rows and sections to make sure you have the best layout of your website and that it can be viewed on multiple devices. All right, some fab features from Octria on this one. We went live with our event. This is how the page appeared. And you will see on the left that there's a violin student performing. That is a live stream that we embedded directly from YouTube. And on the right, you'll see we have a chat box, which we also embedded from YouTube. And it was really great to see all of the parents and family members. They were supporting the students. They were chatting up in that chat box um, and encouraging the students as they performed. Below that live stream, you'll also see that there's our donation button followed by our thermometer. 
What's also very fun is that you can watch that thermometer climb live. So the supporters love seeing that. Our team loves watching it grow. It's really a fun experience. Texting. Texting has been very effective for us in ways of communicating with our clients, supporters. More often than not, we are really in close reach of our cell phones. So this is a great tool to use. We do recommend not sending out too many text messages, but several reminders the week leading up to your event and one text reminder the day before and about anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes before your event actually starts. That way they can prepare to tune in soon. We also send out one text during the fundraising program, normally around the time of the ask or the raise the paddle. And while the Key to Changes event didn't have an auction component, uh, we do also have other events that we've planned with auction components. You can use that texting feature for text to bid, which many people do use. Marketing. I designed all their graphics for their platforms, and that includes, of course, Facebook. Before we even started our promotions for the fundraiser, we made sure to promote the festival. So as you can see here, we switched out the organization's Facebook's header page image and their profile picture to be event branded. We also created additionally a Facebook event page and we made sure to pin some of our posts to the very top of their Facebook page. And here are just a few more examples of social media posts that I created. We always suggest having an attractive graphic and include a short description in your posts on social media. We also suggest sharing video clips those are very enticing, engaging. So having like a teaser video um, or someone sharing their excitement for the upcoming event really does build some momentum for your event. All right, and then here you see an event email that I designed for Key to Change. I included their event branding. I had that call to action button high up in the email and I uploaded a video thumbnail of the ED, Quinton, who is inviting everyone to join the event. And just a side note too, I've seen other organizations who in their emails put a big play button in the center of their video thumbnails, and sometimes that's covering up someone's face. So if you can avoid that, keep the button to the side, or just have a text that says click here to tune into the video. I also included that thermometer there, so that really encouraged extra donations as well. People enjoyed seeing that climb in each email. All right, and while not every organization wants to send out physical invitations, we do encourage our clients to consider it. There may be some donors who would appreciate a physical invitation and some donors who might not even be on their mobile devices often. So this is a great way to reach them. I really loved designing this physical invitation because I had this rare opportunity to get to know their students and their families a little better. And you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. So here you see the front side of the invitation and the back side, it was a folded invitation. Here's the inside, the top portion and the bottom. And what's really unique about this invitation is that we were able to get, I think it was five individuals to write personal messages to donors and supporters. They share in only a few sentences who they are, the impact Key to Change has had on their life and why they would like other people to join the event. We have a really clear call to action there on the bottom half of the invitation, and we're directing everywhere to one local location, which is the website for Key to Change. And there they can find out more information, register, and make a donation. All right, I'm going to hand it back over to Alex, who's going to share our third case study. Thanks, Sarah. Now for our final case study. So Hello Community Day School is a Jewish day school based in Rochester, New York, that offers a full day program with dual curriculum for both general and Judaic studies for students K through eight. This year, we're going back to the future with the current students, families, faculty, and alumni. Their Octra page is actually alive now because we're kicking it off on Sunday and in, in case anyone wants to check it out. I'll drop a link in later. So when you first arrive on the Octria homepage that I created for Hillel, you notice that it feels like an extension of their website. So you can notice that at the very top of the screen, you'll see their logo, 
And then right there in the center, you'll see that the call to action buttons, register here and donate now are easily accessible. So that is one of the best things you can do because like Sarah mentioned earlier, we want to reduce clicks. This page is set up to reduce as many clicks as possible. We do not want your donors to have to go and search how to register or search how to donate. We always want those options right there. Now, another important part of a home page is sharing what is going on with your virtual fundraiser or a hybrid or in person. So, and by doing that, by having a schedule posted, you're able to share what is going on and what your donor should be expected to participate in. So in this slide, you can see that we have a full schedule listed on their Octria page. It has the fun themed graphics that Sarah made. It's showing what event is happening each day. And then even a little bit more about who's going to be participating. We want people to know that they should be putting these times and dates on their calendars and to block it off so they should be prepared to um, interact with your fundraiser during that time. So not all events are the same, so you need to prepare your community. Now, one of the most important best practices that I wanna highlight that Sarah mentioned earlier as well are the equivalencies. Here, we are showing potential donors exactly who their money is going to and a representative cost of how they could help with programming at the school. We used real pictures of the students, which is super important. Stock photos do look really nice, but we highly recommend giving your equivalencies that personal touch. You can also see that I included the thermometer right there on the donation page, so donors know how close we are to the fundraising goal. Also, when talking about that personal touch, make sure to take advantage of Octria's amazing theme settings. You can really use these preset Octria elements to your advantage. For example, when working with Halal Community Day School, we decided it would be really fun to host a kosher cooking class as one of our small events during this week of giving, and we needed a way to share the recipe list and ingredients with everybody. Now, like I mentioned earlier, our goal is to have people stay on that same page. We want to keep people on the one Octria landing page to donate, register, participate in the online auction, and in this case, learn what they need for the grilled steak and broccoli salad recipe. So using the preset document preview option in Octria, I was able to have a downloadable recipe card available right there on the Octria site. Another fun element is utilizing the embed features that Octree has to include moving animations. So I embedded a DeLorean MP4 file onto the Octria homepage to give it that extra pizzazz. So if you wanna see that car hit 88 miles per hour in real life, you'll just have to go to our Octria website. To spread the word about the Back to the Future week of giving, we decided to take a look about who else we could involve in this event. In the past, their fundraiser was in person and required a ticket purchase for dinner and the children were not allowed to attend. Without having those physical and monetary constraints, we opened up the invitation to students at the school and this year took advantage of incorporating the theme to go back to the past and actually involve the alumni. We also wanted to provide people with tangible marketing items. Our blast from the past boxes that you can see here were a fun way to spread the word about our online event while offering a unique package to the organization's community. We also recommend providing physical invitations for any virtual and hybrid event. People love something that can, they can hold on to and parents especially need really nice reminders as there's so much going on. You can see an example of both our virtual and physical invitation on this screen here that Sarah designed. We recommend sending out both. That way everyone knows about your event. Um, we actually attended a different webinar earlier and people need to be notified at least four times that they should register for your event before they even begin thinking about registering. Now, in the past, this organization sent out invites with reply cards. We did the same thing this year, but instead of selling tickets, we actually shared more about how people could donate or sponsor the fundraiser. So like I mentioned before, our website is actually live now for those that wanna check out some of these ideas. Um, and I can actually just go ahead and drop the link into the chat as well. All right, so I know that was probably a lot to take in in such a short amount of time. I would encourage everyone to jot down a few things you learned right away after you jump off while it's still fresh on your mind. 
because honestly, if there even is a recording, sometimes we just don't have the time. We know how busy nonprofits are and how busy planners are as well. So in case you do want to revisit the webinar, I know that Lori is going to send it out later. So thank you so much in advance, Lori, for making sure everyone has that available to them. Just to recap on a few key items here, best practices, communicate. Communication is key. Share your event schedule online. Put together that FAQ page. Make sure contact information is up there and create clear, invisible call to actions. Fab features. Use that live stream, uh, that embed, excuse me, to embed live stream, video, chat, trivia. With this tool, you can do so much. And then marketing. Use all of your channels. Make sure you're leaning into peer-to-peer. -peer. Think of your board, your staff, volunteers. Use email and social media to post regularly and get information out there. And make sure you're carrying your event branding all throughout your collateral, from your website, to your physical invitation, to your thank you gifts. Alex, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Thanks, Sarah, and thanks to all of you who joined us for our webinar presentation today. So up on the screen, you can see um, some different ways to connect with us and find us online. I suggest taking a screenshot so you have an easy way to remember how you can connect with us. Feel free to reach out or connect on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Um, and of course, if any one of you would like to connect and chat about your next or upcoming fundraising event, we welcome you to schedule a free 30-minute consultation call through our website at www.gfsevents.org. I'll drop that link in the chat as well. You can also sign up to receive our monthly event guide right on our website. We share helpful tips and trends that we see coming up in the event world. Um, we would be happy to take your fundraiser from drab to fab. Lori, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us. You can tell what, when you come to an Octria demo or an Octria webinar, and then you come to a GFS webinar, and how bright and lively and gorgeous the photos are. I mean, that's a sampling of how amazing these women are. It's a phenomenal group to work with, and I'm pleased that they were able to share a little bit of their time with us today and with you.